Hey everyone, this is Barnaby Anderson from Crypto at 10X and your co-host along with Noble Dracon. Hey guys, this is Noble Dracon. We're going to have an exciting show today. We're going to talk about OpenSea, the drop in their NFT volume. We're going to also talk about Fortnite Apes and an amazing thing that Eminem and Snoop Dogg did, how it was received, and just kind of get a look at what the industry is doing overall. Let's go get it. We'll see you on the inside. going on you know we're in, we're in the so-called middle of the crypto winter right um mm-hmm. nfts had a huge explosion our project band royalty you know we built an exchange a marketplace all this great stuff and now nfts uh, are kind of panning out the way we talked about when we started uh band royalty we said if order for nfts to really have long-term and longevity they really do need to have something behind them than just pretty pictures I think the market has proven that's kind of the fact. Well, let's go have a look and see what people are saying. Because here we did talk about just that. Because we uh, had a hunch that, which is not just a hunch, but we acted upon it, that the the trading of JPEGs as a whole new industry we thought was pretty light. Uh, it's not something that that the world is used to. It's not an asset that's been, uh, you know, has years of experience. And so that's why, um, well, let's have a look at it. What are people saying? And, uh, yeah, this- I mean, and mind you, you know, we own JPEGs, we own uh, crypto funks, we own Shiboshis from the Shiba Inu crowd, we've got some immortal monks. So, you know, we love the PFP market, but, you know, we had no idea at the level. I mean, this is from Chain Debrief. OpenSea lost 99% of all trading value in 90 days. That's dramatic. Yeah, this is from today. And uh, totally dramatic. And, and what they're saying here is all, all the NFT exchanges have had their uh, their trading volumes. So you can check it here. You can see looks rare, open C versus looks looks rare, uh, share Solana. All of them have had a drop by more than eighty percent, and that's uh, that's since this year. Now we've also seen. I mean, that's that's huge. Ninety nine percent on the trading volume. Open is the monopoly. It's like it leaves the others pretty much. Kind of in the dust. Uh, yeah, so, it's, what, what what do you think is behind it? Why why do you think the drop in the activity has been so dramatic? Is it hodlers? Is it people not interested? What exactly is going on? And what do you think is behind the numbers? Partly? Well, we've obviously the biggest impact is the the general the, the normal crypto market. Bitcoin. Bitcoin is what leads uh, the whole market, and so we saw it reach its high back in November of 2021. And it's been on a decline since then. So that's like not not it's like 10 months or something like that. And so therefore that's affected Ethereum because Ethereum follows like all the other cryptos, they follow Bitcoin. But all of the trading volume pretty much happens in Ethereum. And so when we see Ethereum take a big hit, it then reverberates through all the other cryptos that depend upon Ethereum, like all the other ERC20, the fungible tokens, and people were saying last year, like, oh, we wondered if NFTs, as an essentially a new asset class in crypto, would be able to weather the storm. But here we are saying no. And actually, these 99% drop, that's kind of similar to what we saw in the ICO market, what we've seen with other um, you know, tokens, fungible tokens, that are pegged essentially through the whole mechanics. Like literally, they're built on top of Ethereum. They're built, ESC20. And the uh, as the fungible token and the ERC seven twenty one and ERC eleven fifty five, they're built on top of Ethereum. So when Ethereum drops, but we've seen Ethereum like it got to a high of just shy of five thousand dollars, four thousand nine hundred and fifty, and now we've seen it drop at the moment as of today. It's around uh, fifteen hundred US, and so it's uh, it's about sixty percent down, I guess. And so the NFTs, one could say, because they're a new asset, people didn't quite know what to do with it. Uh, that's why the trading volume. Now, either we're seeing people like hodl uh, and just wait for the next bear market, I mean, the next bull market to come come through, uh, or, or they're just I mean, hunting that's around. Kind of what, what I'm imagining is what's happening, right? 
you have all these people who particularly, you know, this whole system has been built on old school Bitcoin maxis, right? Who have been taught to huddle downturns, accumulate, grow your coffers, you know, do what you can to acquire as much as you can during the downturns, because when the boom happens, it's going to be out big. And to be frank with you, we've seen it time and time again, that when people accumulate during down markets, when the boom comes, they are getting outlier returns, you know, the things that you can't even perceive in almost any other investment. Now, there's some people who are crying out that uh, this is the end of the get rich quick and the get money fast in crypto. But I think this is just kind of the prelude to another story. Uh, volume does not necessarily equal uh, interest. And I think volume doesn't necessarily equal ownership. And because people are not selling, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not hodling or they're not waiting for the next moment to sell. They're just making sure that they don't get caught at the lowest price possible. And that's kind of the impression that I, I see when I look at these numbers of volume. So on the surface, they seem horrible and they seem like, oh man, NFTs are dying because you and I both know the regular media and people in standard investments can't wait to uh, uh, give the death knell to crypto. Their whole life is about how to show how bad crypto is and crypto is ending. It'll never come back. You brought up ICOs. I remember at the end of the ICO quote unquote era, they could not wait to say, oh, crypto is dead. Crypto is over. Nobody will ever buy Bitcoin, Ethereum. This is all ridiculous. And next thing you know, we get Solana, we get uh, Aave, we get all these different companies building their own chains. So it, it, it became the, the springboard, EOS, right? A billion dollars raised during ICOs and then became uh, its own protocol and Wax being in soft shoot. So we saw all this exact springboard during the downturn. So I, I, I'm, I'm curious to see the reality of the lack of volume and whether it equivocates with people's lack of interest. For sure. Like we saw like after the ICO sort of phase back in uh, 2017, 2018. And then with the the new boom that we just had in the bull market from the end of 2020 through to 2021, it was DeFi and NFTs. So DeFi had actually been around in the previous one that decentralized finance, like the coding up of, of money on chain, that was still the, the its early stages, but then it really took hold. So crypto cryptocurrencies, they've always got a new spin on existing tech. And so that's what we're seeing here. So like this article saying that while the board ape is the headliner NFT series, prices are down, like probably, I think they dropped even down to 50% of their, which is still like, they're like a blue chip in inverted commas, as they would say. But this article is pointing how NFT market is headed for new heights uh, in this coming decade. They're saying that it could even be 20 times greater. Now, people typically find it hard to believe this stuff in a bear market like we're currently in right now. But what we've just been discussing is how the existing tech can be respun into better utility. And so while the potentially the first use case, the first main use case of NFTs being the JPEGs, maybe that is actually on a decline. Maybe people are not going to see the same utility for their uh for their apes. But as what we believe is that the next major iteration is going to be around music. And that's why we built out bandroyalty.com and bandnfts.com because we see that there's a true use case. Like NFT technology is a real tech. It's useful. It's for non-fungible. Uh, it's the trading of assets that uh, you can't split up. That's what non-fungible means. And music represents a great use case of that. And just but because- a couple, but As I say, it's a use case, but not... You know, sometimes people have a use case that is a solution looking for a problem. Mm -hmm. But as we've talked about before, music has some serious problems. And one of them is streaming is really uh, the death knell of music and creatives. Uh, the fact that you have to have tens of millions of streams in order to just have a uh, minimum wage shows that it just doesn't work. So, you know, we, we have a deep belief and we still think that NFTs, and you know, this article is great to point it out, have not only a place in uh, the future of music, but also a place in people collecting music once again. It's about getting people to go from being casual users of just streaming services to going back to being true fans. And I think that NFTs have the biggest power to do that. I mean, like, look, Eminem and Snoop did their own, you know, they own some board apes. And at the VMA, they ended up uh, turning it into their own uh, music video. 
of them being the, their own board apes. Absolutely. So here we're seeing this, this mashup of board apes, of NFTs, and the, the Music Video Awards. So it's really interesting how there is this convergence. And this is still super early, meaning nobody quite knows the best way to do all this. We've taken our, our cut at it, at the reinvention of the music industry over at Band Royalty. We can see a way to make use of this technology. And, you know, Eminem and Snoop Dogg, they're playing around as well. Like, they're literally playing. They're, um, I mean, that's, they're, that, like, that's, you know, you know, they had a lot of critics. People were claiming that gorillas did it better back in the day. They were uh, trying to put down the type of artwork that's being done and, you know, on and on. But the reality is they are taking a risk with a new technology in, in such a way that allows people to not only be exposed, but become aware that there's a better way to interact with your favorite artist. And in fact, with the right NFT, it could actually be, you know, backstage pass to uh, concerts. You know, it could, you know, when I try to explain to people NFTs, I try to get them to take one step back. An NFT as a JPEG is the least utility of the programming that's available to you. When you sit down and you look at it and it's programmed well and an NFT has metadata, it's actually a mini uh, uh, a mini app that can do things that'll unlock experiences, unlock uh, events, unlock all kinds of things. And, and it's exciting when we see that happen. Yeah, which is the reason we, we built out Band NFTs. I mean, we just, um, we're super excited about what this means. We're actually really impressed that the uh, MTV Music Awards were incorporating NFTs into it. So a big shout out to Snoop Dogg and, and, and Eminem for doing that. Uh, we just see it as actually building out the space. And we do clearly believe in NFT technology. And we see the, this next iteration of music being the main use case. And we think that's actually going to blow everybody away. We think at the moment, people are like, oh, they're still, because they're, they're dealing with the leftovers mm -hmm. of the previous big pump that were yeah. the apes, et cetera. But a smart investor, somebody who's actually got their finger on the pulse of tech, they look ahead and they go, well, actually, yep. there is something good here. And how could this be better utilized? Well, we spent the last 18 months building that out. And uh, we're, we're excited about where this, where this is going to go for everybody. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we even acquired a music catalog uh, that has the likes of songs performed by Justin Timberlake, songs performed by uh, Jay-Z and Tim Timberlake, songs produced by Timbaland uh, with his performances. We have songs uh, performed by Cher. So we have a nice little performance catalog that we are showing regular people what it looks like to be a music mogul, what it looks like to participate in the music industry behind the curtain. And so we're really excited uh, at all aspects of how uh, this is starting to really come to life, to be honest. And so with <laughs> Eminem and uh, Snoop being on the VMA awards, this revalidates our whole point of what band is meant to be. And so we're, we're really excited at, at, at what's happening in the music industry, but it takes a lot, right? I mean, uh, between the controversy of the time of Board Apes, between what's happening on Open Sea, there's just a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, to, to Barbie's point, we're at the beginnings of it. So, you know, I think the next phase, and, and I always try and explain to people, I think the real next phase of uh, most NFTs is going to be connected to culture, connected to artists, and you really take full advantage of the kind of metadata that allows these NFTs to be true micro apps that will unlock stuff when you use your Web3 and Web3 connections. Absolutely. So thanks everybody for being with us today. It's been great doing this little recap of where the markets are at. Uh, we know that these are, you know, tricky times with the with the markets and uh, it looks, who, who knows if we've sort of hit the bottom. There are strong arguments to be said both ways that the bottom's in and then there are others who are saying it's not. And uh, personally, I mean, I might be wrong about this, but I, I personally actually think that the bottom is is actually kind of in. I'm thinking that we uh, we I'm, might I'm, be. I'm going to have to, I, you know what? And you guys will have to watch this as we progress. I'm going to have to be contrarian on this, Barbie. And, and I don't mean to be just to be contrarian. And I've been a trader for almost 30 years. And you've seen, my, you know, I've written books on futures and forex trading and options trading. Um, I don't think the fix is in uh, until all of the institutions shake out all the weekends. Uh, and when that happens, then 
we'll see the next boost. So I think we, we've got a little bit of a ride. I think this, this, uh, this winter will tell us where we're at for sure. And we know that in the winter season, uh, typically uh, crypto has a big push down, no matter what it looks like. And so if it's been middling along for a while, uh, you know, I think it's going to be profit taking for institutions, which means we're going to see one big push, one last push down. Let's see. The proof will be in the pudding. But regardless of that, uh, I am definitely pro that there's going to be another, you know, more sunshine down the track. We're going to see another market uptake and we're going to see this tech that's been uh, incredibly, cr what's been built from our side. I believe that it, the music is going to come, the music is going to sing and we're going to see some, some positive uh, light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, no, for sure. I think that, you know, what I try to explain to people is that just because things are, they are the way are, they are now, it doesn't necessarily mean they're always going to be that way or that they've always been that way. And there's a lot of misunderstanding. Crypto is not going away. These micro apps aren't going away. I remember when I thought the PC was dead. And I don't know if you remember, Dell was one of the largest personal computer companies around. And then they nearly collapsed in, in one phase. And then the next thing you know, they turned around and became again one of the largest PC distributors when they got went from being public to private again. So the reality is uh, everyone wants to to, to ring bell on the depth of technology, but we can't put the game back in the bottle. No. And we're going to keep forging ahead. Thanks, everyone, for being with us today. We'll see you on the next Crypto 10X.